Let's have a look at the reference image that we have here. And we've got our eagle. So specifically for this set, we're looking at form transition, uh, or we're looking at, uh, sorry, not form transition, we're looking at surface transition. That is how, you know, one, how we can uh, appreciate and how we can better understand one surface moving into another or sort of merging into another so that when we are creating, whether it's creatures or any other design that you're looking for, that that movement or that transition from one element, one thing to another is not so jarring, that it's a little bit more uh, natural, it's a little bit smoother as well. So when we're doing these studies, we can, for example, looking at this eagle, we're pretty much going to ignore everything about this that makes this an eagle, right? We don't really care that it's an eagle or really that it's a bird. What we're looking at is what are the contours? What's running along the surface? So in this case, the first thing that I'm looking at as this runs down here is the fact that it kind of does that, right? Creating this sort of nice sort of flow-like shape. And what I'm going to glean from this is I'm going to approach this as sort of a series of flat planes uh, or a series of contours that's ultimately going to end up uh, creating a object for me. As if, you know, and that's what I think about it, is like, imagine if you're trying to build this or draw this and the whole thing is made out of one continuous, uh, well, as few sh uh, sheet metal pieces as possible. If I'm looking at something like this, then one of the things that I'm you know, looking at, again, this time round, just like the other ones beforehand, I'm following uh, the photograph that I see as much as I can. I'm trying to photo, uh, follow the picture. I'm just going to follow this along. Now, it's not as blocky as what I'm making this right now. But I'm using this as a start. And so here is, this is what I'm really getting at. And the wing itself, I don't, you know, the, the actual feathers, not really something I want to concern myself with right now. I'm mainly thinking about how does the surface contours or how would the surface contours actually flow into one another. Like I mentioned before, Imagine if what we're dealing with is actually a, uh, shall we say, a, uh, a piece of sheet metal, right? So that's the design. That's the form that it has. It's almost like a plane. So how do we think about that transition, that surface transition? So in the case over here, how does the wing transition contour wise into the body so if I look at this a little bit deeper I can see that it actually cuts in here there's a roundness to the actual muscle part of the wing and I want to incorporate that in As I'm doing this, I'm almost, I'm imagining this almost like a weld line. So it curves in, right, flattens out, flattens out, curves in, and it follows this contour. I right, give this a little bit of a thickness because everything has a thickness, right? Even a sheet of paper, there is a thickness to it. So what I'm, again, what I'm looking for when I'm doing these types of studies is that I'm trying to figure out if I were, almost like if, if we were to look at these as rudimentary 3D models, what would we see if we removed all the textures, removed all the sort of bells and whistles, what do we actually see at the end of the day? Right, what's that? What's that form? Now, early on when we did the shark, the form that we were looking at were sort of big geometric forms. The forms that we're looking at now, though, are more about the contours. That is, the contour lines that we're getting as a result of the shapes that we're putting down. 
So that's the stuff that I care about right now because I want to know how the shapes actually merge into each other. So if we look at the eagle's uh, feet or the legs, right, so if we think about it right now, they kind of come down really as these sort of, uh, these, I guess, pegs or fins almost. Right, so they kind of come down like this. But how do I, how do they actually connect to the rest of the body? That's what I'm interested in. How do we transition from the leg into the rest of the, uh, the, the body, the, the body proper of the, of the bird, right? Of this eagle. So again, I have this, if I think about this, I have this from the top or from the side, I have this section here. It's kind of like that representing this part. And then I have a part for the legs, which is going to look like that. So how do these merge together, right? So again, imagine if this was you know, two hot pieces, like very, very sort of super heated up pieces of metal, and I'm kind of squishing them together. What's the? How are they going to blend, right? How do I? How are they going to adhere to each other? And this is where we start to follow some of the contours around, and I'm softening this up. Now we're dealing with animals here. So there's a lot of soft contours or sort of soft blending in the context of, let's say, if you're doing this for a vehicle or something that was man-made, you might end up with some very sharp and severe contours that you wouldn't otherwise get. We need to get these soft ones because we're dealing with an animal or with a sort of a, a creature and they tend to, you know, we tend to have soft uh, div uh, curvature developments, right? Or transition, sorry. I tend to not have these sharp nine degree corners or these sort of linear panels. Right, now there is a little bit uh, of these linear parts in these drawings. That's really just because I'm focusing mostly on these contour changes. Again, I can look at this before, like this is kind of a cylindrical form really that runs up and then this flattens out to be the feathers. So again, I can kind of bring this across Let's kind of bring a little bit of that in. So in this case, if I were to contour it, I'll go there. And rather than kind of run down following here, it's actually going to drop a little bit underneath. And that's the line that's going to come out to give me the rest of the, uh, the feathers or the wing. If I was to contour out or draw every contour line that, uh, you know, that's within reason. Again, this is where we can, well, in this case, we don't necessarily see the transition, but we can get an appreciation of that transition being very severe. Were we to soften it, as were we to, if we were looking for something that was a little bit softer, let's put it in a section like this. Well, we look for something a little bit softer, then what we could do is from here, it curves down. Right? And so that allows us to start again. The whole point is to allow us to, well, not, I suppose not allow us, allow us is probably the wrong wording for it, but it starts to get us to think about how do we want to handle the change in terms in our form? How do we want to handle if we were to run our hand across the surface of this creature, right? What is that going to feel like? Now, in most cases with creatures, we can, you know, we can estimate this pretty well because, well, you know, we are creatures ourselves or we are animal ourse animals ourselves. So we kind of have a pretty good innate feel of what's going to, uh, you know, what's going to be appropriate when we're dealing with uh, living, breathing uh, you know, animals or organisms, right, things like that. So we have a pretty good idea uh, or pretty good sort of innate feeling about that. Uh, and so we don't really, perhaps we don't really need this as much, but what it does come into its own though, when we start to have to deal with more man-made objects, right, or more hard surface designs, 
uh, this starts to uh, become something that we want to pay attention to. So depending on what you're drawing, depending on what you're trying to study, even amongst uh, different types of animals, some, I suppose, elements that we're looking into may become more important than others, right? Just from, uh, just from the shapes that they end up taking. Right, in this case, we have a transition from the beak, which is very triangular, and it's going to flatten out to that broad sort of head. And that's going to pull back, essentially give us this other shape. Aside from that, no other sort of major points of transition on the head. So this is kind of falling a little bit back into what we're doing for the shark. And let's kind of give this a little bit more of a thickness. Uh, just for a little bit of fun, we can kind of put in a, a body at the back that's a little bit more solid. Yeah, we can kind of cut into this a little bit more. Across the tail feathers. Now, I've been breaking this down by eye. Proportionally, the wings are obviously going to be a lot bigger than what I have here. But I'm just focusing mainly on studying, like, how does, it, how does the form transition, right? So how does this round out and then curve back here? How does this actually, you know, flatten? Or how does the body, I suppose, round out to go to the wings? It looks like it's quite blocky. Same thing with the legs, but it does have this soft sort of transition in terms of along the surface moving back, right? And we're going to do the same thing as what we've done before, which is we could take this into a three-quarter view. Uh, we can then change it to another view. But what I want to do is just to get a few more examples. I'm going to grab the lion. Right, and let's use the same approach to deal with the lion as we did with our eagle. So specifically though, I'm gonna ignore most of the lion and I'm gonna focus on just the face of the lion. That's gonna be our primary uh, concern. Let's grab this, let's make the lion's head a little bit larger as a reference image. And what I'm gonna start doing now is let me shrink my eagle down so the tail doesn't get in the way in fact since i still have this i can start to incorporate this change over here and where this runs down and it cuts there i can start to incorporate that into some of the drawings that uh or into this drawing that i have and using contours to help illustrate that point. And so this is really about focusing on that surface and really using that surface to help sell the, uh, the shape or the overall sort of design of what that might be. Now I keep referring back to design, uh, even though we're not really designing an eagle or a lion or a shark or anything, but we want to think about it in the context of as we move forward, what are we, what exactly are we using these studies? You know, what are we using these studies for? Why do they exist? And how are we actually going to be employing them? So come down there, and cut in from this point. So let's revisit a little bit of the shark, which is well. Let's take this and let's break it into some geometric form. So let's look at this line. I'm going to break down the nose first as this sort of uh, structured element. And along here, it's really just an extrusion as it gets down to the mouth. It really kind of flares out like so. And we're going to pull it back just to get that shape. 
And from here, let's have a look at the brow. And that's going to come up here. And some other elements in terms of this sort of uh, shape that we could uh, bring in. Right, but for now, I'm just going to keep it relatively flat as I carve out the, uh, the shape for the rest of it. Now, as I'm doing this as well, I'm not trying to carve out all the shapes at once. I am going to overlap shapes because it's easier for me to figure out or to deal with this as a more simpler form than it is to try and overcomplicate a lot of this. For example, I know that the eye sits somewhere there. And so as I fill this up, I start to create additional shapes that are going to help create that, uh, that form, almost like I'm sculpting out this form. So this kind of almost becomes like the cheeks of the uh, of the lion. This part right here. We've got this part kind of that, that curves out like this. So I might, uh, and I've also got the mouth down here. I guess the chin that kind of pops out. So let's put that in. And we can represent this maybe, let's say, something like so. Doesn't look very lion like right now. It's all right. I'm just trying to get most of the shapes in. Right. Make sure that proportionally everything kind of fits. Of course, we've got this sort of wide triangular section that comes down. But for now, I'm just going to I'm going to ignore that because that's we can put that in later. Let's just focus on the main face of this. I can also kind of change the profile of this a little bit just to get it a little bit more line-ish. So the face is quite narrow now because it's missing this part. But let's just focus on what we have here. So at this point, what I want to look at now is how do I blend these parts together, right? How do I start to sculpt out this surface? So again, you know, if we think about our transitions, we can start to think about how this might flow down here. How that might flow or how these parts might connect back. This is going to connect it into these parts. How this is going to recess in. So this might start to curve and really kind of merge. Let me make this a little bit larger. This might start to curve and merge in with these sections up here. Of course, we can soften this part for the nose, that transition that moves down. Right, this might, so we have these soft transitions running all around, but this one here, it's a lot more severe. Right, it's a lot harsher. So that's doing its kind of its own thing. there. Okay, so it kind of forms like the, the jowls or the cheeks. Let's have to soften these edges a little bit more. And yeah, we're still looking at the contours, right? There's a little bit of a ridge that run, runs along there. So if we were to contour things, it'll still flow down and start to round out. 
making these corrections as I go. Because the original drawing was not in a, a perfect sort of uh, perspective. Again, doesn't really matter, right? We are just trying to sculpt out and we're trying to be fairly loose with our drawings using these sort of basic geometric forms and figuring out where the contours are. We slowly develop the drawing or the, uh, or we slowly learn the form and the shape of this lion. And now I can go in and add in this part if I want. So if it extends out, you know, it has to flow into the cheeks. It's a little bit high. That's kind of the, I suppose the, is the hairline for the uh, the mane for the lion. So we have this ridge there. That's going to come down, and there should be an eye in here to be represented by an orb. This is going to contour over. We know that a little bit underneath because it's going to sit recessed in. Give it a shadow just to kind of emphasize that it sits inside. Okay, we can see some of the elements in the drawing itself like this, they help us create a, you know, already some contour lines. The little bits of fur and whiskers and things, I don't care about them. They're not important. What's important is capturing the overall, uh, I suppose, surface information that this lion has. Let's get the nostrils in there. Cut that out. Let's shift our bird away and shift it over here. Whoops, cut a little bit of its tail off. Let's move it across here so we get a little bit more space for our lion. All right, that ridge comes down and it looks like it kind of dips in. So let's actually put that in. So we start to, again, really sell the contour information for this. When we're sketching like this, it does us no harm to over contour. Of course, when you're actually drawing for a client or if you're actually trying to get a design out, sometimes over contouring, it's not so great because it can you can end up hiding some design elements just by having too many lines. But that's more of an issue of line discipline than anything else, particularly, and it's something that you wanna focus on if primarily the bulk of your work happens to be line based. Right, but as a study, it does not hurt us at all to over contour. Right? And at least if you over contour, you're aware of what's going on. And over time, as you get more experience, you get more confident doing this, you can start to control the amount of contouring as your image. Now, when I start to get onto the fur, or in terms of the main, how do I actually handle that? Because I don't want to draw individual strands. I want to look again at that contoured surface, right? So I want to deal with these as individual locks of hair or tufts of fur rather than as just individual strands. So let's start with this one here because that starts about there. So it's kind of right here. It's a nice, easy one to deal with, which is I can treat this as surface in itself almost like a teardrop shape All right so it'll have its own volume and then behind it 
I can put in some more. Okay, this can kind of come down here. It's going go a little bit off page, but it's fine. Again, this we can represent this as having its own volume. And thinking about the contours. So the contour line, this comes down. If I follow the side of the cheek, this comes down and it might end there before it comes back up to round out this section here. Right, and that's gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit of line weight over here just to help sell that depth. got this part that comes down here and so that is its own section so we can kind of give that a little bit of volume of the rest let's kind of bring in this part here it seems to be tucked underneath so this type of well, this particular approach to doing observational sketches is really contour driven, right? Or surface uh, transition driven. How do we go from, let's say, a flat surface like this or a blocky surface I began with, and how do I start to translate it into something that starts to merge together? I have it here over here. And so I can, again, you know, if I start to do it in a very blocky format, like so, right? How do I start to look at that transition? Right, so let me curve this out because the ears are round. And even if I draw, let's say for example, if I draw the ear like so, right, I'm looking at the picture, I'm drawing the ear like this. Right, I want to go in and contour the whole thing. Because it's not just, you know, what we want is not just the shape that we see. What we want is to understand the forms. Right, so these lines come across. And then we might purposely offset other lines to show that there is, you know, this part is going to drop down there before it curves around over here. Same thing with this, right? And maybe there's a little ridge here. So these come around, they kind of pop up again. This type of information is really important to give us an understanding of the depth that uh, a particular form or section has for a uh, design. A main up here, this looks like a, you know, a pretty solid part. Same thing with this. So again, we take this, bring this across, it really kind of cuts around the ear. Okay, so let's put again some contouring on this this form so almost like uh, I suppose I'm drawing them almost like uh, like these metal sort of tentacles or maybe uh, the abdomen of, a, of an insect All right, but it's usually it's not just about okay let me draw the shape like something like this All right, it's really okay well that the shape is one part but the other part is well what's the center line for this what is the actual three-dimensional form of this? And by being able to contour out the surface or the topography of that form, this is a pretty good understanding of the depth or the, uh, the, uh, the actual shape that it actually has. Right, this section that comes down over here. run down the center line. Now a really great thing about doing these studies is, uh, is that we, we can kind of just say where the center line is. Don't necessarily have to plot it out in the whole, you know, plot out the entire thing. Let's put in the ears on the other side. The hair kind of covers it on this side. Uh, I'm going to put down the rest of the mane on the other side. And contouring it keeping my drawing relatively fluid or sort of soft as well. So I'm not too worried about uh, the details. Now how I draw digitally is pretty much exactly how I draw uh, with pen and paper. I will, 
I'm always looking at how do I sculpt out these forms? How do, how do I uh, really capture the solid shape that these guys have? So you might, you know, you might be looking at this and thinking, okay, well, maybe this is a digital method, but it's not. It's uh, how I approach this, no different than how I approach if I was drawing uh, pen and paper. Right? Form is that important that regardless of the medium that you're working with, it still ends up being the same in terms of the overall approach. Get some line weight in there. Just about to pull these sections out. So we can actually see our line. And don't worry if your line doesn't look exactly or you know whatever it is that you're drawing doesn't look exactly like the reference image we're not going for a one for one uh one to one uh representation we're trying to understand what the hell this thing is right we have to explain it visually a little bit of shadow up here just to just to make it visually pop a little bit more i like the uh thing about uh storytelling right you have it's uh show don't tell so we have to be able to show our designs rather than tell people what they are. And when we simply just draw what's in front of us and we don't really give uh, people an understanding of the forms or the contours, we are telling. We're not actually showing that point because we're telling someone, oh, you have to believe me that this is a 3D object rather than showing them that it is a 3D object. Even the, some of these shadows I'm putting in, I'm curving them to create the illusion of, uh, of a contour.